Welcome to Right on Red. But first, this video, just for you guys. Let's take a look. By the way, we have a little video. Take a look at this. How would you say your mental focus is? Who is focused? <laughs> As it is, I think it's, I, I have a, look. Let's get ready to bumble! Well, I think it's a right for people that bad to kept there. Throw it in the next time to Franklin. Guys, I will. Well, I can't believe I said that. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I'm just for the new guy that was pretty cool. Corn Pop was a bad dude, and he ran the bunch of bad boys. Wait, 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 wait. All men are overcrated by the go, you know the you know the thing. It can hold near and dear to you that you uh would um, like to be able to you know. But the nature, not representative of uh, Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? All right, let me make sure that she looks over here. Um, uh, um, what am I doing here? I'm talking to her. Uh, yeah. I got hairy legs that turn. Thank you for telling us and listening to me. I appreciate it very much. What? Brian, and I'm literally taking it right on red as we speak. Oh, turn green halfway through. But, uh,. Yeah, so wanted to uh, touch on something I just heard on another program. Yeah, that's right, I'm biting off another program. But it's just so, it's so ridiculous and it got didn't get the attention it deserved that, you know, I, I wanted to bring it up again. You know, we had, we had Joe Biden and Stacey Abrams and all of them, you know, all the companies that left uh, Georgia to talk about that racist, racist voting package and voting bill. Um, which in reality, it, it, there was nothing racist about it. And uh, in reality, 85% of black individuals believe that voter ID should, should should be something that's mandatory. I mean, it's just common sense, really. It's, it's making it easier to vote. It expanded the old Georgia voting laws by quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, but it also made it harder to cheat so they won't be questioned by people. I mean, it's weird that one one party wants just basically anybody to be able to go in and cast a vote at any time in any area. Uh, ballot boxes not be monitored where you can just drop off, whatever. You can do uh, ballot harvesting and then drop them off at the ballot boxes. I mean, it's just, it's just, it'd be crazy to think that there wasn't cheating or fraud going on. If, the, if it was like that, if it was like, you have to have a system, you have to have a process of procedures or else, you know, it doesn't work just like any other, you know, system. It doesn't work. It's, it's insane that they, they, they bitch about it. And then the biggest thing is you have Joe Biden getting up there and he said, I, I cracked up when I heard it. He said, this is like, well, first he said, it makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like. It doesn't even make any sense. The guy's so stupid. He's looking up in the air for an eagle. And, and then he says, this is Jim Crow on steroids. I can't believe it. And uh, and then I'm looking. I, you know, I'm, I wasn't around in the Jim Crow last time. So I'm looking uh, looking things up to see, see what it was like. And I'm looking at pictures of people just getting, you know, pummeled by, by the cops. And, you know, and they had to, they basically had to dance to get to vote. And, and they had to... They had separate areas where they could go, and they couldn't, you know, white people always took, you know, they always got the, you know, the better end of the stick. It was just, it was, I mean, it was nothing like it is today. These Georgia laws 
are not, I mean, it's not even comparable. It's not even comparable. Even if the Georgia law said, um, you know, even if they did, if it was a racist law where they were like, you know, you can't, the black people have to come on this day and this day only, it would still not be Jim Crow on steroids. That's how bad Jim Crow was. But we don't do that because we, tr I mean, honestly, it's a Republicans built the bill. We don't see color. We're trying to just get people access to vote and make it so there's, it's not quite, it's not a questioned election ever. It just makes sense. It's common sense. So it's like, you know, just, with him to say that, it's just, it's such an insult to people whose grandparents or parents, you know, lived through that era of, you know, of segregation and the Jim Crow laws. And it's just like, I mean, for them to have to go through that, where the N-word was, you know, common out of every white person's mouth in the area down south and in certain areas. And, you know, to the way they were treated, the jobs they couldn't get or could get, the way they were able to vote, the, 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 how they were counted as a person, everything they went through back then. And everything they, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. and, you know, some others did to change that and make it so color doesn't matter anymore and it truly doesn't in the real world although they're trying to make it matter it's the only thing that matters in the democrat party the only thing that matters is color sexual preference all that nonsense that's it nothing else matters qualifications nothing but in the real world color just doesn't doesn't matter it really doesn't and they're trying so so hard to make it matter because you know by shifting from biden being just hilariously stupid and insulting they're also dropping these you know the, the what what you, basically what you need to get in in certain areas of schooling and test scores and any other sorry I was looking at that I was looking at a police officer so so basically they're uh, the Democrats and it, all the woke individuals the, the progressives throughout the nation, what they're doing is they say, due to white people and Asian people being, you know, having high, the standards are higher for them because they they have better grades. They're this and that, and and black than black and brown people. It's that equity isn't there in law in like law school and medical school and things like that. So what they're going to do is they're going to drop the standards for everyone. What what does that sound like? Social, uh, so communism, Marxism, dropping things so the top goes down. You never want the bottom to go up. Never remember that. You never. Anytime you see something where the top comes down, you, that the bottom never goes up. You know that. You know where that is coming from. The Marxism playbook. But uh, yeah, so they're, they're so they drop the standards at a lot of schools. Um, they don't even have the. My, my nephew got into college in New York, he went to University of Brockport, he started, the, or not University, College of Brockport, started, you know, last month, the kid didn't even have to take the SATs, I'm like, what the fuck, like, dude, I, t I had to take the SATs, the ACTs, and you know, if you bombed them, you, you better, you had to take them again, because you, colleges weren't going to take you with, uh, you know, an 800 SAT score, but it, it's amazing to me what they're doing, and what this does is it dumbs down society, and what it really does is now, if you know that they're letting people into medical school who really shouldn't be there because they they were well under the standard, you know, the GPA and this test scores and everything that you, that was there originally, but now they got in, and you are, you know, say you're going to a you know a ear, nose, and throat surgeon for a cancerous uh for a cancerous uh polyp on your trachea, you walk in, and the doctor's black. The first thing you're going to do, and not because you're racist, but because they're racist, because the progressives are racist and put a racist system in effect, you're going to think, oh man, do, uh, do I want this guy? Because I don't know if he got in, got in because, of, you know, the, they lowered the standards for black and brown people. So this is, uh, this is something I got to think about. You know, I'd rather have a white doctor, an Asian doctor. And that's perfectly logical because they're the ones who put the system in place. And maybe this guy, and it very well might, maybe this guy aced everything. He might have been the valedictorian of his class and got a 1600 on the SATs. Aced medical school, was a breeze. The residency killed it. And he's the best ENT, you know, in, 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 this, in the hospital. But you don't know that. You don't know that. And 
And without knowing the facts, you're gonna think one thing when you see that skin color. See what see what their this is what their policies do. They make you see skin color. When you don't wanna see skin color, they make you see skin color. It's disgusting and I can't believe more people don't see this. I mean, I know more and more people are seeing this and you're seeing like uh, like the Tulsi Gabbards you know, that are coming over from uh, the Democratic Party. And if you look, it, it, I mean, it's, it's she's just one of the you know big names that came over. There is a monstrous number of people leaving Democrat and going to the independents or all the way straight over to the Republican Party. I mean, someone like Jeff Van Drew out of New Jersey, the congressman out of New Jersey, he did this, you know, four years ago. He said, you know, when they had the first uh, Trump impeachment, I believe it was, and, you know, Nancy Pelosi said, first of all, he started changing his views. He just didn't see how the Democrats see anymore. He started looking at, like, common sense, you know, and uh, when Pelosi told him he had to vote, you know, you better vote uh, yay or your career, your, you know, your career could be real short. He just said, you know what, um, I'm good. I don't believe I should have to. I, I, I don't believe he's done anything to be impeached, and I'm going to vote no, and I'm going to go to the Republican Party. Tulsi Gabbard, she was also threatened by Nancy Pelosi, but she went up and said, all right, I won't say no, but I won't say yes either, said present, which is really cool. Anyways, they want to take AP courses out in a lot of schools. Why? Because... It's not fair to black and brown people, they say, because they aren't. This is, it's disgusting. I cannot believe that more people aren't like bringing this up and saying, you are literally saying white and Asian people are smarter than black and brown people. You're literally saying that. Like, how can this be possible? If two kids are going to the same fucking school, right? And this, that means they both grew up in the suburbs, say, in, in, in a suburb. Like, that black kid is not any different than the white kid as far as you know the way they grew up the the, the, the area they grew up in the, the demographics you know as far as the, the ge geographic location and the, and the school district and all that stuff um, as far as the you know the socioeconomic part of the equation I mean you could say people you know black and brown people in the city schools aren't getting the education that people in private schools and, and the suburbs and the suburban schools are because that's the truth but it's not because they're black and brown. The, there's white people in those schools as well that, and, and Asian people in those schools as well that are having the same exact problem because again, it has nothing to do with the color of your goddamn skin. So stop saying it. It's, it's amazing that people even fall for this shit. Like, you know, if you have, I mean, I, I know a lot, I know at least four or five, you know, uh, people that have said, you know, you know, I used to be, I used to kind of agree with the Democrats. They kind of fought for, for, uh, for us as a minority, but you know, now it's just getting stupid and they're kind of insulting us. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. You know, that's exactly the truth. But you say black and brown people, they basically say black and brown people need their help in order to succeed. You can't succeed without my help. That's what like, you know, Oprah says that you, but yet she did. She, she made it, you know, Michelle Obama, you're oppressed. You can't succeed without our help. But yet I, I did because I'm Superwoman, you know. So it's it's just amazing. Uh, you have Joy Reid. Oh, my God. And that other bitch that's on MSNBC with her. Every show is just race, race, race. But it's insane how insulting it is. Like, for them to say that. Like, bitch, you don't, they don't need your help. People in the suburbs that grew up, you know, in, in the same school district as, as the, you know, every every, you know, skin color is in most suburban school districts. So people, you know, and for example, I'm from Henrietta, Henrietta, every kid that was black in my class grew up in the same area, the same school district. You know what? They're all about the same class, you know, economic class and, and financially. And some of them are doing extremely well. And I'm sure a couple screwed up because that's just a uh, you know, the way things happen, there's a lot of white people are screwed up, you know, it's just like, it's, it's just how it happens, but the point is, you know, the, the, the access to opportunity was equal amongst between the black people and the white people and the brown people and the Asian people and whatever in that area, in that school district, in that, you know, in that geographical, you know, econo in that economic class that's in that geographical area, it is exactly the same. And they don't need your goddamn help, Cory Bush. 
They don't need your goddamn help. You know, Joy Reid and all these people who think that they succeeded because they're super. Like, they can do it. But you need, you need, you definitely need their help. No. It's bullshit. They victimize you, try to get you down, try to make everybody see color, try to divide us, try to make think, people think that, you know, white people are this nice. They, they literally, Joy Reid literally said, literally stated about the Tua Tagovailoa injury that if that was a black guy, they wouldn't have gotten him off so quick and then that, that ambulance wouldn't have showed up so fast. They wouldn't have done what they did for him because they, uh, because they treat black people when they're banging their heads all over and they don't they don't care about bad black people. She brings race into every single thing and it's just disgusting. If the whole world thought, if the whole country thought like Joy Reid, we would literally be at war right now, like with each other. It'd just be a disgusting, disgusting place to live in and she's so miserable. And you know what? If you're that miserable and you just, all, all you think about is, you know, <laughs> Like the Twitter people who think, literally go right to the Twitter feed every morning to see if Donald Trump, something bad happened to him so they can cheer. Like you're obsessed, you're miserable, you, you all you think about is race or Donald Trump. You What you need to do is you need to go see a psychologist, you need to get yourself a nice warm blanket, and you need to watch old movies for a whole weekend without going to your news, your, you know, your Facebook wall or your Twitter feed or whatever, any kind of electronics. You throw, put your cell phone away, watch some old movies, watch some, uh, you know, hang out with some real people and get off the phone and also stop talking about politics for a weekend. I promise you, if something happens to Donald Trump, we will tell you. We will tell you, okay? Like, I mean, I, I feel like they'd go into withdrawal. Like, they'd be shaking and shit. It's like, it's the obsession with well, Donald Trump came because of an outside force, him, you know, running for president and being president. But their obsession with race and climate is scary because neither one of them have an actual solution because neither one of them are an actual issue that we are affecting or doing anything with. Race is no longer an issue in, in the whole, in the you know, in the grand scheme of things as far as the system. There's no systemic racism. There are racist people. Joy Reid is one of the most racist people you ever meet. She's a black lady. Uh, there's racist white people. Look at the Buffalo shooter. What a piece of shit. Look at the uh, Waukesha uh, guy who drove his car into white people because he hated white people. There's racist assholes out there. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it, it, them saying something, you know, some, some Joy Reid, you know, talking shit, shit about white people isn't going to change the way, I, you know, my, my future success and some white guy talking shit and saying the n-word isn't going to change any you know black person's future success it, they deserve an ass whooping but that's about it the point is the system is is fixed to the, for the most part now they're trying to go too far over the other way like Tulsi Gabbard actually kind of there was a not scared to say about the you know the anti-white racism and rhetoric but we'll get into that another time right now it's like oh man it, it, the whole point of this thing is that everybody here has the same opportunity to be what they want. The say they have the same the opportunities there. Not everybody has the same access to that opportunity. So instead of going with equity and always saying equity, equity, which means let them grow up and then give them you know some some stuff so they're closer to the success of a middle class family or whatever. No, 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 no. You're, they're all about root causes, except for when it comes to race or climate. So a root cause would be, let's look at the fathers in the home, like Ron DeSantis did. And let's get mentorships over there. Real root cause would be get the criminals off the goddamn streets because they influence the children and the youth more than anything. And their future success is going to be done once they hit that criminal justice system. But they have the bail reform law, of course. And, the, and laws that put criminals on the street. Thank God some people, like our mayor, are actually seeing the truth. Um, you know, so so when they have these issues that they they consider that de the Democrat, you know, strongholds, that's what we, we, we care about. We care about uh, race. We care about, in, in that race is, uh, you know, homosexuality, LGBTQ, um, you know, whatever, anything else that can divide into a small group. That's what they like to do is divide us into groups and then tell you to dance. But, and then climate, 
There's, there's no, there's, you know, wh where's the goal line? There's no goal line for climbing. You're not going to be able to measure any success it's because, you know, the, again, I'm not, I'm not a climate denier. Climate is changing. Of course it's changing. It's been changing since the beginning of time. You know, in Rochester, New York, when in the Jurassic, you know, era, the average temperature was 95 freaking degrees. Average. There was no winters around here. Do you know we had two ice ages after that? Did, were, were the, were the, I mean, there was humans you know, around, a few humans around in the ice age stuff. We survived it. Do you think they survived it? And they, they those, those uh, all the ice and ice caps and shit melted because they were driving a lot of gas powered cars, maybe? Yeah, back in the, you know, 10,000 BC. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke. The, the, the weather changes, the climate changes because that's what it does. And it always has been, it always will. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. There's nothing we can do to stop it. So if I saw a dog lose, I was like, what? Um, so again, that's what they, but they, if they use that, then they can, you know, give su those big subsidies to all their buddies at those, uh, you know, those companies that claim to be climate friendly and all this stuff. So that, that's what it's all about. It's all about money for them and control. And the race thing, that's all about control, real control. And making sure the masses are worried about bullshit that doesn't exist and not focusing on what they are doing. Not focusing on Joe Biden, uh, you know, taking, depleting our strategic oil reserves and selling them to China and not thinking about Joe Biden, the actual evidence that's there, that he's lied to us all and he got rich illegally. No, keep worrying about Donald Trump. You know, don't focus, don't look here, look over there, please. And they do. That's the problem with half this country is they tell, the establishment tells you something and you believe it so easy. They tell you to look somewhere and you look somewhere so easy. It's just such clowns like that. Like for years we've said we needed someone that wasn't in the establishment. We got it. And you clowns drove them out because you didn't like me tweets. You know why they hate him so much? Why they hate Donald Trump so much is because he is everything the establishment's not and he was going to expose everything it was the nancy pelosi's and them getting rich super rich off of insider trading and then they then she crushes the bill the insider trading bill crushes it that was going to make it illegal for congress to do so it's already illegal for the fucking all of us did they get, but not illegal for her and and then and she she made sure it didn't see the floor that's pretty cool but that's the stuff nobody sees because it's never on. But Donald Trump would expose it, and he would. And the one thing, if Donald Trump does nothing else for America and for you know, the Republican Party, he taught him how to fight. J.D. Vance, you know, Carrie Lake, Herschel Walker, you're seeing people finally fight back. Matt Gates, you're seeing people say stuff that, you know, they're, they're, you're not supposed to say that, you're a Republican. You're supposed to roll over like Mitch McConnell. No, no, no. And even some of the ones that never fought before. Ted Cruz wasn't a fighter. Lindsey Graham wasn't a fighter. He's kind of a clown still. But, you know, uh, Marco Rubio was not a fighter. And Ron Johnson wasn't a fighter. But they're fighters now. They they fight. When they when somebody tells them, calls them something they're not, they fight back. When they, when they hear the lies about, you know, their party or themselves, they fight back. And it's because of Donald Trump. And the fact that he wasn't going to sit there. And now you got people like Ron DeSantis, who literally, I really truly think he is just a, you know, a, a younger, more polished Donald Trump. He will call a reporter out so quick. Carrie Lake the other day, you know, you know how they call her election denier and follow her around. So she got her team, you know, to have a uh, camera crew that follows the press around when they follow her. And they, they're going to record everything so you can see the truth. She brought a 150 page you know, manifesto of all the Democrats over the last 20 years that have challenged the election or denied the election, like, you know, Stacey Abrams, uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, everybody, Adam Schiff, who denied the 2016, and there's about, there's about 20 congressmen in 2016 that were Democrats that challenged it. So she was like, are they election deniers? Right to the press. She just, oh man, she had, they're, they're all looking like this. Then you have J.D. Vance just crushed Tim Ryan, where Tim Ryan couldn't even look at him. Couldn't even look at him because Tim Ryan called him racist. J.D. Vance has has two mixed children, biracial children, and he basically made Tim Ryan look stupid as they get. You know, pull up those videos and watch it. But 
We're gonna talk more about this, but I pulled into my destination and guess what? I'm going in. Thanks guys for joining me to this, on this unexpected episode of Right on Red.